Anyway, uh, thank you very much. That was a nice introduction by Nick. Um, got 30 minutes here, so try to hold all the questions for the end. I'll, if we have a little time, or I'll be outside. Uh, the title of today's lecture, Regenerative Techniques for Non-Surgical Spine and Joint Repair, including prolotherapy, PRP, and BMAC, and we'll go over all that. Uh, just a little on myself, I am, as he mentioned, both a board-certified medical physician, uh, board-certified by the American Board of Family Medicine, and a diplomat uh, from the American Board of Chiropractic Examiners <clears throat> with licenses in several states. I'm also an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin, where there's the only course taught on prolotherapy, as well as a preceptor physician for the <clears throat> Southern California University of the Health Sciences. Actually, it's the Los Angeles College of Chiropractic. So, we're going to talk right away. What controls joints? <coughs> Excuse me. A little water here. Um, what controls joints? Ligaments and tendons. Ligaments and tendons, I know it's been a long time since we've been in school, but basically uh, on the left here you can see tendons go between muscles and bones. Ligaments go between bones. So basically ligaments do this, hold it together. Tendons move things. And when ligaments and tendons get weakened, torn, or damaged, they're going to be dysfunction. So what causes your joints to dysfunction? By the way, joints are also peripheral joints, meaning shoulders, elbows, knees, ankles, but also the spine. <clears throat> That's also a joint. So basically, as this uh, little schematic shows here, weakened, torn, or damaged ligaments and tendons, starting up top, um, lead to excessive joint motion. Then you get increased pressure and pain. You get decreased range of motion. Arthritic changes, arthritis, arth joint, itis, inflammation. Then you get more strain on the ligaments and tendons, and then they get more weakened, torn, or damaged, and it keeps going round and round. And we're here to show you what can make them stop. So these are some of the common treatment cycles. Obviously, us here <coughs> are all into alternative therapies, but you have joint pain. It can be acute or chronic. They'll tell you to take NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, the Motrin, Naprosyn. I can't tell you how many side effects they have. Just look them up yourself and you'll see. Uh, you get same or increased pain, so the physician usually says take stronger ones. At that point, they offer some x-rays. Then they may even say some cortisone injections. Then all of a sudden, they'll say, you know, let's get an MRI. Uh, there was actually just a study done in a small little newspaper back east. Some people might have heard of it called the New York Times where they interviewed uh, um, Ivy League orthopedic professors. One of them took 31 professional baseball players who had no problems in any of their joints, MRI'd their shoulders, and 90% of them had definable surgical MRI reports. And his, uh, he said at the end of the study, if you want to have uh, joint surgery, go get an MRI. So. Don't believe the MRI because then they're going to lead you to arthroscopy. They'll do it through a scope. If they can't fix you, then they'll take you into surgery. Okay, so uh, a lot going on here. So this is what traditional medicine tells patients, tells your patients, and you need to know that because they're coming to you maybe seeking alternative. There's nothing you can do about your joint pain or you need to learn to live with it. That'll get you running out of the office. You never play that sport again. Well, anyone who does sports, boy, they're out the door. Uh, take these pain meds and, of course, have surgery. So, here we go. <laughs> prolotherapy. So what is prolotherapy? It's a natural, non-surgical way of assisting the body to heal weakened, torn, or damaged ligaments and tendons. Okay, the definition, it's in Webster's Dictionary. You can look it up. Weakened or torn, damaged ligaments and tendons. So prolotherapy comes from the word proliferation, to proliferate. And um, there it is, to proliferate. Growth of new tissue. It will actually cause the growth of new tissue. And it's your own body's response. Hey, we're at the anti-aging here. We're all about natural and holistic and alternative. This is your body healing itself. It is not some foreign substance. What we inject stimulates, and I'll get into another slide, stimulates your own body to send cells out to heal. And of course, it is non-surgical, and that's what people want. They don't want surgery on their joints. There's too many side effects. So how does it work? It stimulates an area. We inject a substance, and I'll get into what that is, that tells the body there's a problem. It initiates a response. The body sends white cells and platelets to that area, which bring growth factor. 
Okay, the white cells and platelets are in growth factor. You start, you get a proliferation. It starts to proliferate that ligament and tendon. Okay, their healing takes place, and finally there's resolution. The joint functions well again. Okay, stages of healing. <coughs> you have an inflammatory stage. You have an early and a late phase. Basically, we're causing a small micro, not macro. I tell patients in irritation, they don't like to hear the words inflammation, but a small inflammation microscopically in a small area that gets the body to start to attract the cells, and then once it attracts the cells, you get this proliferation phase, and then you get a maturation phase. That inflammation phase takes about two to four days. The proliferation gets really good proliferation in about two weeks. So I see patients about every three weeks. You can see them every six weeks or every year, but every three weeks is a good thing. We don't want to see them less than that, maybe 16 to 18 days, but we don't really want to see them less than that because you really need some good, significant proliferation. Maturation, which is at the end, can continue even up to a year. And this also holds true, true for PRP. The growth phase will continue on and on and on. It doesn't stop when the injections take place.